Well, welcome everyone, and thank you for joining us tonight. It looks like we have a really great group. I'm so excited. I've been looking forward to this evening uh, for quite a while. Uh, Wichita is an awesome city to move around by bike, uh, especially right now, you know, with the traffic volume uh, being quite a bit lower. And of course, we know uh, that Wichita is it's a pretty flat city and we're laid out in a grid. So hopefully tonight's talk uh, will provide you with a few tips, uh, resources, and motivation uh, to give by commuting a try, or uh, maybe even to give up one of those vehicles. I'm Kim Neufeld uh, in the dark blue, uh, if, you, if I haven't met you. I am a certified cycling instructor, and uh, I've been bike commuting for about 10 years or so around Wichita. And uh, this year, I'm definitely trying to live a little bit more car light um, and excited for that opportunity. Many of you probably know me as the executive director of Bike Walk Wichita, or maybe from the Women Bike ICT group. Um, speaking of which, this is Amy here in her favorite Snoopy skateboard t-shirt. Hello, uh, I've been biking around Wichita since about 2003, 2004, and uh, the jobs that I've had deal a lot with financial stuff, so uh, talking to other people about their money is a little stressful and emotional, so the bike is basically my uh, de-stress uh, mode of transportation. And uh, you probably have seen me at some Women Bike ICT events, and uh, just some general Bike Walk Wichita volunteer things. And uh, Amy's voice may sound familiar to some of you who have listened to our Bike Walk Wichita podcast recently. So uh, many of you are familiar with Amy. Tonight, uh, we'll be covering just about everything you need to know for bike commuting around Wichita. Um, really the biggest lesson that I have learned is that it's really all an experiment, right Amy? Oh yes. It, trial and error on lots of things. I know I'm always uh, trying, you know, to find new routes and uh, trying out new tips and, and equipment. And I'm always testing out new clothing because I just never can get it quite right. Of course, Kansas weather, you know. Yeah. Uh, so just be open to experimenting and know that there is no right or wrong way. Um, it's completely personal. After all, you are the one pedaling the bike, so. Uh, we have a lot of content to cover, so it's kind of weird. I'm not used to not hearing all of you uh, in a group setting, uh, but we've muted the lines. Uh, and so we will definitely stop and ask for questions. And we'll also look for your tips uh, that you will share in the chat feature. So make sure if you have questions or tips, uh, put those in. And many of you know Jack Murphy. He is our volunteer coordinator, and he is going to be moderating our chat tonight as well. Hello, everybody. So send chats, and we'll all relay them to Kim and everybody else. And also, if you are seeing a whole grid of boxes of people, uh, you might want to go up and select the speaker view, um, and that will give you the large screen. So let's uh, jump in and get started. Uh, right before we get started, though, I know we have quite a few new friends joining us. So hello, welcome. It's always exciting to see new people. And I uh, just want to give you just a brief introduction to Bike Walk Wichita. Um, we are a resident-led nonprofit here in Wichita. And we are really working to make Wichita a more livable, accessible, connected city. And we're really trying to do that by making biking and walking safe, um, equitable, and appealing. So we are really doing a ton of projects. And we really like to connect with residents uh, where their passion meets up with our mission. Um, and so that makes a lot of our efforts a lot of fun, uh, for example, like this one tonight. Um, some of the larger efforts that we work on that you may be familiar with, uh, we do a lot of advocacy for bike and pedestrian infrastructure and policy funding, that type of stuff. We also provide bike safety education uh, as this, um, and we try to hit all ages and abilities with that. We also host regular walks and rides. You'll see us post them weekly, uh, really to encourage people to get out and explore Wichita because we have so many great neighborhoods. And we also have our recycle shop, um, and it is completely open to the public. So uh, hopefully you will connect with us. 
Uh, speaking of recycle, that is our community bike shop and you can bring your bike in on Fridays and Saturdays between one and four. And we have workbench tools and bike mechanics that will assist you um, in learning how to repair your bike. Uh, we also have Tuesday and Thursday evenings that uh, you can come in and volunteer and fix up bikes for kiddos and people who need transportation. And what's really awesome about our recycle shop is that you can use your volunteer hours in exchange for parts, uh, bikes, um, accessories, anything that you need to keep rolling. So that's a really um, awesome feature, I think, of our bike shop that makes us unique. And we do also sell a few of the um, really nicer bikes or the really cool vintage bikes uh, that come in that are donated. We sell those uh, recycled bikes for a low cost and that is how we pay for the parts and keep our shop running. So we really appreciate uh, all of your support. Of course, we have a variety of resources on our website. We have that here listed and Jack will be sharing a ton of resources tonight on chat. Um, and we have a full calendar. We will be adding stuff now, you know, as things hopefully open back up uh, weekly. So let's jump in and talk all things bike commuting tonight. Okay, well, first we have our, our, poll, our first polling question. And it is, you know, how do you, are you bike commuting already? Is this something you're just interested in and starting out? Or is this something that uh, you've been doing for a while and you want to uh, get some more tips on or share your tips in the chat. We're happy. I mean, we love crowdsourcing ideas. It's, uh, that's kind of the way we get through things around here. Definitely how we roll. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. So, uh, be sure you, uh, participate in the polling questions and, uh, we'll kind of get the results here shortly from Carol. See what comes in. Yeah. And Kim, how long have you been bike commuting? Um, it's been about 10 years, I think, now. Um, you know, I was really blessed to meet Barry pretty quickly, and he was a great bike mentor, so. Awesome, awesome. And I think both of us bike commute pretty much across town, uh, the exact uh, opposite directions, so. Oh, nice. Here's the results. Wow, we've got uh, pr close to 50% of you, 42% that just are wanting to uh, learn. And uh, that's wonderful because I've been seeing so many people ride the neighborhoods during this uh, stay at home order. And I know that it's easy to get quickly bored of your neighborhood and want to do more with your bicycle. So that's, that's wonderful. So Amy, uh, you want to jump in and kind of start us off with the benefits of bike commuting? Okay, so some of the things, the, the first thing you'll notice when you start to bike commute is that you're not paying for gas for your car. And that's a pretty obvious uh, benefit that you feel in your wallet pretty immediately. Um, some other things that I found about bike commuting is I don't need to have a gym membership. It's my gym. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, I bike a lot for de-stressing, so that um, kind of helps ease some of that stuff. Um, let's see here. What else? So the other thing, if you want to get super technical about the financial side, the financial benefits of bike commuting, you can go to AAA has a great resource of calculating the per mile cost of owning a car. And because you know, I'm an accountant and I deal a lot with numbers and stuff, I like to know those things. So for me, riding my bicycle and operating my car, it's 75 cents a mile to operate my car. And when I bike to work, I'm saving $18 every single time I bike to work. So that's a pretty significant thing. You bike to work twice a week and you've just paid for your gym membership. You know, <laughs> you, you bike to work twice a week and you've got a little extra grocery money that you can splurge on or maybe splurge for a movie night or something. And, uh, you know, those things are, are pretty immediately noticeable. 
Absolutely. And, you know, people don't think about the insurance, the registration, the oil changes. And right. Uh, so, you know, as you can uh, eventually give up a car, you can really, I bet, uh, reap the benefit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I once heard, you know, car ownership is like a $10,000 entry fee in participating in our economy. Yep. So that's, uh, you know, we don't think about, you know, there are people in our community that cannot own a car. And so the bike is their only source of transportation. And uh, they'll tell you pretty quickly the cost of owning a car because they can't have one. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, speaking of health benefits, of course, we've all heard, you know, about the variety of health benefits, you know from helping with, you know, obesity and diabetes and, and so many blood pressure and, and other issues. So that's all great. And, uh, you know, what also makes me feel good, like you mentioned the gym and not having to pay for one, it makes me feel really good when I can multitask and know that I'm working out and getting to work or buying the groceries at the same time. So uh, that always makes me, keeps me uh, really motivated. But in addition, it's really, I think, also the mental health benefits. So Amy, you already mentioned, uh, you know, the stressful nature of your job. And as well, when I have a stressful day, you know, as soon as I roll out uh, to go home at the end of the day, I cannot keep replaying that day through my head. I have to now pay attention to traffic. And what's nice is the, the local art murals and the nature along my route uh, brighten my mood. And so by the time I roll into my driveway, you know, I'm a much nicer person. Uh, I think my husband uh, would ho hopefully agree with that. Yeah. Um, as also for the environmental benefits, you know, we are seeing that right now, uh, whether you look locally or whether you look across the globe. I mean, when you see the pictures of China and all these um, areas that were heavily polluted um, and what the uh, stay at home orders have done for them uh, by reducing that traffic emission, it just, it really made me think about how much we just give up and take for granted um, to have our vehicles. Right. It's, it's such a, it becomes such a habit to just drive them. And when you start bike commuting, you just need to make it habit. Yes. The more often, the better, I find. Uh, it, it gets easier. Yeah. Um, and bike commuting is a great way to reduce your carbon footprint. Um, and it really does help encourage others to give it a try. They'll see you out doing it and uh, they'll want to. Right. So the last thing that I've noticed about riding around is here in Wichita, you know, our grocery store is closer than we think. Our friends that we go to visit, they're closer than we think. Our activities are all closer, you know. I live in Riverside. It is just as fast for me to bike to Old Town to go catch a show or have dinner as it is for me to drive, find a parking spot, go check in, whatever. And the so biking that distance is is nothing compared to, I mean, it's just the same as driving your car. And so Biking just makes your community so much closer. And even though it's like you see your neighbors, you can have sidewalk chats that are kind of impromptu. You see the buildings, the nature, the art that you don't notice when you're in this box of your car going 35 to 40 miles an hour. You notice so many things about your community that are wonderful or things that you want to improve about your community. And you can, you know, with Bike Walk Wichita, with our advocacy, you, we can certainly help advocate for improvements in our community. There's also, you know, other channels with the city of Wichita to do that. And you don't necessarily notice them when you're in a car. It's so true. I've met so many of my neighbors during this time uh, that, you know, just as I'm riding by or walking by, and to be able to just wave and, and say hello from a distance. Is yeah. Awesome. And it's... It's good to know you, when you know your neighbor, then you start to notice if something's off or out of place and you can kind of take care of each other that way and take care of your community. If you start noticing things that are odd, you can ask your neighbors about them because you know them. Yes, you know? absolutely. Yep. Yeah, so many benefits to biking and bike commuting. 
Um, so let's just jump right in and start talking about bikes, uh, you know, our, our favorite topic. Um, the great news is that any bike will work um, to commute around town. It is completely up to you um, and what meets your needs. Uh, so the bike you have is the bike you can commute with, of course, you know, always looking for an excuse for another bike or two or three. Um, it can be a fancy top of the line bike, or if you're gonna be parking it maybe in a less secure area, you may wanna think about riding, you know, more of a used bike or, or a beater or something so that you know it's gonna be there when you return. Uh, but the good news is any bike uh, will work. So that being said, there are definitely a few common styles uh, that you see around town. And uh, so the top left here is Amy's Road, uh, kind of fitness bike. It is also what I ride. I have a trek here. Um, and if you want to sit upright more, you know, you might look at the uh, cruiser that's there, a uh, picture that's also one of Amy's bikes. Uh, I, Amy, I thought it was funny that you have a bike for almost every category. Um, yes, sorry. <laughs> and, and really the cruisers are good for commutes that are less than 10 miles, uh, you know, round trip. And so I know Amy, you use this a lot when you do go to the farmer's market or yeah. downtown. So, um, and then you'll also see, of course, just mountain bikes, your everyday used mountain bike. Uh, we have tons of them that come through here. Uh, those work really well. And uh, what we're also seeing now uh, in the bottom left is Amy's e-assist bike. And that, those are becoming really popular which really is no surprise here with Kansas and our wind. Uh, if any of you have tried test riding an e-bike, uh, it just feels like you have a nice gentle breeze at your back at all times. Yeah. It, it takes the wind completely out of the equation. Which, yeah, that's pretty nice. Um, <laughs> of course, my husband keeps reminding me my main goal is fitness, so I'm trying to prioritize that. Uh, but it definitely can help you, especially uh, like Amy and I, we do have fairly long commutes. And so yeah. the ESS bike can just make it easier for you to say every day, hey, I'm just gonna hop on and do this. Right. It, it cuts 30 minutes off my commute compared to my road bike. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. Um, and that being said, if you see Amy rolling through downtown, don't be alarmed. Uh, she's not running from you. She just pills out whenever she takes off. Um, and you know, if I had that kind of power, I'd use it as well. So uh, some advice that I received really early on uh, from my bike mentors is uh, ride what you have and see how it feels. Kind of pay attention. You know, do you want to sit up higher or, or more upright? Um, can your, does the fit of the bike work for you? Is the seat comfortable? Um, if not, that's something you really want to address because, uh, as I can tell you, you can uh, get an injury over time if your bike does not fit you well. Um, are you aiming for maybe speed? So those are just kind of things to pay attention to when you first start bike commuting uh, to kind of see what you, what you like. Uh, if you don't own a bike yet, the best advice I got was consider purchasing a used bike. Uh, you never know what style you're really going to want to be riding in six months. Um, I've been shocked at how many different styles of bikes I've kind of transitioned from. And, you know, then you do kind of start to collect a few uh, for, you know, the different styles of riding that you need. So, and uh, I have attachment issues. So, <laughs> <laughs> yes, we all do. Uh, our recycle shop does offer a few lower cost recycled bikes. Uh, like I mentioned, these are bikes that are donated that um, our people fix up and we sell for really low cost. And so um, they can always help you. You can also come by recycle and ask all sorts of questions. That way you feel empowered when you go to the bike shop. Although I will say all of our bike shops are super friendly and helpful and they can answer all of your questions. So stop by any of our local bike shops. Some of the less common styles um, that we are seeing increasingly more uh, on our streets are cargo bikes, uh, which are super cool, and also recumbent bikes and trikes. Uh, many families are finding the new cargo bike options great for hauling kids and lots of stuff. You know, our friend Tyler, I'm not sure if he's on tonight or not. Oh, he is. Hey, and Tyler. I wanted, to, I wanted to say his... Um, comment about the e-bike was that he uh it makes him be more consistent when he's able to like get to meetings and make his riding more consistent 
and uh, that's that's really it you know I don't show up to work a hot sweaty mess yes yeah that that is nice it's a nine foot tree by the way that is awesome and so yeah you see here he has his uh, tree and a child and he looks like he has plenty of room for other stuff um, what is nice is when he came on our Christmas lights ride he has a clear cover, a kind of a dome cover that goes over the cargo area, which is nice for keeping the kids and cargo nice and dry during the winter and rain. So cargo bikes can come, uh, you can have them made or designed uh, to fit your needs. Also, uh, super cool recumbent bikes and trikes, we're seeing those around a lot more. Um, often people that have maybe neck or back issues or balance issues uh, tend to, to like these as an option to continue riding. And if you haven't tried them, they are super fun to ride. So. Uh, uh, Chris put a note through here on the chat that old mountain bikes from the 90s make great commuter bikes. And those really fit in with our recycle bikes. We have those a lot. Yes, they do. And uh, I know, Chris, uh, you're getting into the uh, collection. Of bikes. <laughs> in plus one. <laughs> uh, so as I mentioned, uh, any bike really can work as long as it fits you. That's really the most you know, important thing to look at first. Um, and then once you have that down, really most of your consideration is going to go into how do you haul all of your stuff. Uh, yeah. So Amy, uh, can you give us some uh, tips? Well, um, I, th I think Kim and I both started out kind of the same way. We had a bike and a backpack. And there's a lot you can do with that. I mean, if you're going to work, you have to think about the kind of lunch or clothing you need to pack. I know even now I have, uh, I keep shoes at the office so I don't have to pack them. So I leave a black pair of loafers and a brown pair of loafers at the office and I just change shoes when I get there. Um, but if you're going to the grocery store, you're probably going to need to make more frequent trips if you just have a backpack. And you're going to have to think about how you're going to pack the items that you have. Um, if you want to, if a backpack starts to not be enough, then you can look at getting a rack and pannier saddlebag set up. And uh, the panniers really kind of add more space and flexibility. The biggest thing with looking at those options is how you want them mounted. Do you want them permanently mounted? Do you want the, to be able to take them off, put them on? Uh, and also you want to watch how large those bags are and how close they get to your pedals so that you're not kicking that bag when you're biking. Um, my road bike is very compact and I had to be very intentional about the bags that I bought for it because I can easily kick those bags. Um, so that's, you know, some things you want to think about when you're looking at pannier bags. Uh, the trailer opens up a lot of options. <laughs> you can have trailers that you can haul your kids or your pets. Um, I, I just think it's adorable when I see people uh, tootling the neighborhood with their dog or cat. It just, you know, as much as a kid, it just warms my heart. Um, there are cargo options that are just strictly for cargo. You want to be sure that you do some test rides. Not that we have a ton of hills around here, but if you have to stop on an incline or a decline, that uh, cargo trailer can really push your momentum into you. So you really have to think about how you're maneuvering with it, how you're going to corner, those types of things. It's not something that uh, you just want to hook up to your bike and run out there and go and do. So definitely do some shakedown cruises. Um, that's something that yeah. you want to do really with any equipment that you get. So very important. Very important. I know when we went bike camping last year, yeah. well, maybe it was the year before, it would have been one of my first times, but I got halfway down the road and sure enough, my tent and everything started working itself loose from the vibration uh, because I did not have it packed uh, nice and tight and with all the lovely knots. So <laughs> there's wow. lots of good cargo options though. And that's what's nice. And this part really is very personal. So uh, I know we have another poll uh, to kind of find out how people like to carry. How do you like to carry your cargo? So if you can let us know, we'll pop up this poll here. 
That's our grocery getter bike trailer there that you see in that, uh, that view. And I put the link to that on our website that if you wanted to uh, learn how to make it, you could look at the plans. And actually that one I believe is mine uh, that I built in one of our classes. So love that grocery getter trailer. Um, it's very compact and you can just hang it up. And... Okay, so did everybody uh, get their vote in? Yep, we'll leave this open for just a little bit longer. Yeah, I really like the, uh, uh, I can only find them on Amazon, but they're called Basil Blossom. They're these nice floral, spacious uh, pannier bags. And they're huge. They, they're huge and they're waterproof. So they're uh, beautiful and very utilitarian, which I love. And uh, I find that people, when I'm biking to work or just biking anywhere on the streets, people see them and they're noticeable. And I want to be sure that cars see me. Oh, okay. So here are our poll results. It looks like we do have quite a few of you using the backpack or messenger bag, uh, which I do use for my laptop still today. Uh, but it looks like uh, the majority like to use the bike rack with panniers. And I, once you try it um, and realize the cargo space that you have with it, it's just, it's really hard to give those up. So yeah, yeah, those are fun. Yeah. Well, now that uh, we kind of know about carrying stuff, Amy, uh, let's talk about locks because oh bike theft God. is definitely a growing concern here. It, it is, it is. Um, this, the picture that we have, the U-lock and the cable, that's pretty much the setup that, that I kind of use. Um, I'm, you know, I can use my cable with just a padlock. I've done that in a pinch. Um, really just, you know, talk to, you know, talk to the bike shops about locks that they're using and stuff. You know, the, the U-locks, they're great. But if you're on a crunch for space or weight, you're not going to want to carry a U-lock because they are heavy and they take up a lot of space. Mm -hmm. So um, you just kind of need to look around, see what fits your needs. The biggest problem that I have with commuting and locks is where to lock up my bike when I get there. I've been fortunate enough with the last two jobs that I've had, my employers have allowed me to bring my bike inside. So I haven't really had to worry about locking it up when at my job. But if I go out to, you know, someplace in old town, or we want to bike out to heaven forbid, we go see a movie or something, um, or we want to go to the zoo. I mean, the zoo does have, you know, bike parking, but it's in a place that isn't really well watched. You know, uh, it would be pretty easy for somebody to walk up and, you know, pick off your, your seat or whatever and just kind of take it home with them. Um, so having secure bike parking and stuff, that's a real concern when you think about, you know, traveling around with, with your bike around town. Um, so that's the biggest thing that I see. Um, let's see here. And speaking of visibility, that was a perfect segue yeah. uh, into lights. Yeah. They are definitely another, you know, important tool. So yeah, the lights, um, I, I would say minimum like 200 lumen on the headlight. I'm not sure about I want to say 50 to 100 lumen on the tail light. I'm, I can't remember exactly. I'm pretty happy with the lights I've had. We've gone through, Clayton and I went through several varieties before we uh, came up with, you know, the setup that we like. But I definitely recommend, you know, something during daytime riding, I use the blinking options. Nighttime riding, I have light sensitivity issues, so I'm very conscientious to not use blinking lights at night because they make me feel like I have a strobe light and they'll trigger vertigo for me. So I don't really want to accidentally do that to somebody else. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, there are some pulse options. There's also a lot of reflective material that you can use. Um, 
the type of light setup that I have now, I really like the light and motion urban headlights. I have a side of the light tail lights. Um, it's just, you know, every time I go into a bike shop and I look at lights, there's always a different variety that's out there. So it's a little hard to say what, you know, specifically what is going to work because it seems like the stock kind of rotates with the manufacturers and stuff. But I tend to have good luck with light and motion, uh, cider light. Um, Clayton and I have also started biking with uh, cameras. We have the cyclic headlights and taillights. And um, it's, there's a safety feature with them. If you, if you choose to turn it on, you can operate them without it. But uh, the safety feature is if, you, if your bike suddenly stops or suddenly tilts at over a 35 degree angle or something, so if you basically fall down or you have a very sudden stop, it's going to send a GPS uh, emergency signal to the person you tell it to get alert. So, you know, if I go down when I'm on my way to work, Clayton knows exactly where I'm at. Yeah, and that's a really important feature. That's very nice. Right. And the cameras have a, like a black box type of feature where if it sends that emergency signal, it continues recording for the next 30 minutes. And uh, they also record audio. So if there's, you know, yelling going on or cars screeching away or whatever, it's going to pick up stuff. And what's nice is you can pull that up uh, immediately and show it to police officers. Oh, yeah. So uh, a yeah. very handy feature. It is. Uh, one thing to mention about lights that I've learned is really stacking them as well, making sure you have them at the different heights. Uh, for people to see you a little bit better. Yeah, having a like a tail light on your helmet, getting it above the line of headlight tail light area, and getting it kind of in a different visual field for drivers is is kind of a good thing to do, especially if you're driving around downtown or something yeah. and you're in a lot of traffic. Um, it's sometimes it can be hard for drivers to distinguish you from a car tail light. But if you have something that's a little above that field of vision, they'll uh, notice it a little bit more. Absolutely, very important. And um, actually, so last year, you know, we started noticing a lot of people riding without any lights. And of course, wearing all black, like why? I, I don't understand why people. Um, so we organized Operation Firefly um, and we partnered with Wichita Police Department's South Broadway Bike Patrol team, um, who are super awesome. And they set us up on South Broadway. Our, our volunteers were so excited uh, for the adventure. And we actually installed more than 55 sets of lights on bikes uh, for people riding by without lights. Um, so it really helps make you know our city and our roads safer for the drivers and the bicyclists. So. Um, and I will tell you, uh, standing out on South Broadway on a Saturday night is definitely a fun adventure. Um, we had a blast. Our volunteers, we had so many, we had so many more volunteers than we needed, but it was just because everybody wanted to come out and hang out. So uh, make sure you definitely light yourself up. And yeah. as you mentioned, uh, you mentioned reflective gear. Right. So this is this little video here. This is actually uh, my boyfriend Clayton. He's kind of a big guy. And this video might be a little loud because it's attached to, this is a cyclic tail light, it's attached to my bike. So you're gonna hear all the chain noise, all the shifting and everything. So, oh. Where did it go? I don't know. Let's see. Okay. Play. Hopefully it's gonna play, let's see. There, there. we go. So that's the light and motion urban headlight. Check out that reflection on yeah. the side. All that stuff that's red is actually white reflective uh, material. And you can even see he's got shoelaces that are reflective and little ankle strips that are reflective. And that's, I really prefer to show movement rather than having a blinking light on my bike. So if I can show movement, um, 
that I that's kind of my preference rather than having a blinking tail light. Yeah, uh, all the research has shown that uh, putting reflective, um, you know, strips or clothing and or lights where you are actually moving, elbows, knees, those kind of areas, uh, catch people's attention. So, right. um, as we mentioned, uh, visibility, you know, is, is so key. Uh, next, I would say with clothes is really your comfort level. Um, and really that's mostly impacted by our Kansas weather um, and the distance that you have to bike commute. So if your bike commute is, you know, 30 minutes or less, you may just want to roll up in the clothes that you're going to be working in um, or going out on your date on. Um, you know, you could always add a reflective vest and or some of these accessories um, to really help with that. Um, unless, of course, you wear neon clothes all the time. Uh, very <laughs> Carol. Um, you know, you can add some of those things and then just take them off simply when you arrive. Right. Uh, if you're riding further, like Amy or I or some others, you might want to decide to invest in a few more layers that are uh, specifically bike friendly or performance materials. Um, and you can find a wide range and actually, um, you can actually find quite a few in our thrift stores. That's a great place to find utilized uh, performance wear. You'd be surprised. Um, so another, you know, as, as weather gets cooler, of course, you'll add on layers and layers and layers. Um, I always like having, you know, a lightweight kind of jacket or vest. Um, I prefer a lot of natural fibers. Uh, wool works really well. Um, people don't think it does, but one of my favorite pieces is an old Banana Republic sweater that has some moth holes in it that I'm obviously not gonna wear out in public, but it's perfect layer for the bike. Um, right. And actually, our women's group, we have a lot of women who like to knit, and the knitters yeah. have found, you know, they've knitted sweaters that have reflective yarn in it, and I mean, there's just all sorts of things if you have the creativity for it. Absolutely. So you don't have to spend a huge amount. You know, you can get it really in any price range. You just have to kind of look around and get a little more creative. Um, a lot of the performance shirts are what I like to ride in. So, for example, my bike month shirt here. Uh, it, that really helps with wicking away some of that moisture and sweat. And then, like I said, I just layer on um, either more performance materials or those natural fibers. I try to avoid cotton um, unless it would be like a super, super, super fine weight cotton. But I don't have any of that. And that would be see-through probably by the end of the bike ride. So I just avoid cotton at all costs pretty much. Um, for work, like Amy, I have shoes there that I leave, but then I also leave a beauty kit to where I can just, when I arrive, I freshen up, um, do a, just a quick cleanup. And some people will also, if they're super prepared, they will take uh, some food and meals and some extra sets or changes of clothes and leave them at the office um, on the days that they do drive. And then that way they can bike commute and not actually have to carry all of the stuff that uh, Amy and I pack up on our bikes every yeah. day. Yeah. Uh, so speaking of helmets, that's probably, you know, one of your pricier things that you're going to want to invest in. And it's really important. They're not only good for protecting your head and face uh, when you may crash, but also for keeping limbs out of your face. Um, and I will show you my helmet here, if you can see this. I have I don't want to blind you. I have a light on my helmet, which is nice because wherever I look, my light is going to move in that direction, which I will tell you, I can stop traffic pretty quickly. I actually have never really had a problem with people pulling out in front of me. Um, super bright light and I can remove it uh, and recharge it. And a lot of people assume it's a camera, which is I think just a nice safety feature. And then, of course, as Amy mentioned, I have a rear light that just fits right in the nice vent of my helmet, and I can pop it out um, and change batteries. But having that up higher, as you can see, is going to catch their attention, and then they'll see my red lights down on my bike below as well. So helmets are super important. If you end up having a crash, uh, they do recommend that you replace your helmet. So keep that in mind. And um, we do try to have free helmets for all the bikes that we distribute uh, to kiddos and to people needing transportation. So 
need one, let us know. All right. So now we're going to talk about kind of one of my favorite things about gear. And um, I'm going to just start pulling things out of my bike bags. And I'm not sure. Um, you can kind of see the slide there. Of course, I have water. Um, I put all of my ID and, and uh, information in a little, small little clutch, and that clutch goes, I can transfer it easily to my bike bag or to my purse if I'm driving. So that can go between a lot of different bags. And we've got, you know, an emergency rain jacket. Kind of, I just leave a light duty jacket in my bag and uh, my oh shit kit. So the oh shit kit is uh, you get a flat or something, your chain pops off and you stop the bike, you're just like, oh shit. So um, yeah, I don't know if you wanna switch back to the video and I can just start kind of showing you what all we got in the bag here. Well, I'm trying to figure out how to do that. If you just get a video, I think it should talk, then it should. Yep. Somehow I think. So. <laughs> Do we need to have it take your video somehow? Are you sharing? Are you screen sharing? No. Okay, so hopefully, if I start talking, you'll start seeing me. Um, I'd go ahead and minimize your. Wait, um, wait, hold on a second. There, there you go. Goes. Okay. I've got it now. Go, Amy. Thank you. So, what I have is a cable lock, and um, that's one of the cables that I use to lock up. And like I said, I combine that with the U lock that is always at the bottom of my bag. So this is my U lock that goes with the cable lock. And um, let's see here. This is one of my, I kind of sub bag a lot of things. So this is my emergency first aid kit. I've got a spare tail light in here and a pen because you never know when you're going to need a writing utensil. I told you she's an accountant. Right. And I have my power bank in case I need to recharge. <laughs> That's uh, this is kind of a new addition. But uh, that's something that I found handy to just keep with me. And because I have an e-bike, I don't worry about the weight anymore. Um, okay. So my OSHA kit is in a really tattered little Ziploc bag here. And uh, I've got my air gauge and a multi-tool. I'm going to run out of space here, I know it. Got our tire levers and our patch kit. And let's see here. My uh, CO2 air pump and a spare cartridge. So the CO2 air pumps, there's a lot of discussion about threaded or unthreaded CO2 cartridges. I would just say, Talk to the bike shop. Just be sure you're buying the right CO2 cartridges that match the uh, dispenser pump that you have. So I'm not going to really get into that conversation. Um, what else do I have in my bags here? Let's see here. Oh, extra straps. And that's probably it for this side. Oh, I've got my spare two. Over here, like we said, we've got the water bottle. And uh, I have my beautiful little women bike ICT bag that uh, we have. I can't wait to when we can have uh, women events again and we can hand these out. Uh, but in here is just, uh, again, more writing utensils, some uh, disinfectant wipes, alcohol wipes, and um, 
another set of reflective strips. So basically, if you find me biking around town and you need something, I'm probably going to have it. Yeah, it's very handy to ride with Amy because she really does uh, carry about everything. Yeah. A few other things that I do keep in my bag as well. She's showing her jacket and everything. Yep. <laughs> um, I also carry zip ties, um, and I have also a couple of Ziploc bags. So in case it rains, I can pop my phone into just a sandwich bag. And right. It works great. Um, I also keep an extra cheap uh, light with a battery in it because I have found myself out where my rechargeable ones have given out. I have chapstick, sunscreen, um, pepper spray, and then I do also carry a knife. Uh, <laughs> and uh, mainly that's for animals and uh, a few creepy men, although I've really yeah. not had any problems here in Wichita. So, uh, Jack, do we have any gear questions or um, suggestions of other items people carry? Uh, nobody has put in on the chat about gear things. Uh, Melinda did have one in the chat, and, and we'll come back to it, I think. But she was talking about what can we do to get good parking at public public places, especially WSU uh, and all. And so that's why I didn't bring that one up, but since you mentioned yes. chat, I want to make sure we didn't lose that because that'll be a good uh, bit of discussion right. we can have. That is actually something, um, you know, Amy mentioned Clayton, her boyfriend. Uh, he's very um, interested in helping improve businesses uh, with their bike parking, you know, especially as our businesses uh, start to reopen. They so the, need our business. So right. you uh, want to, you want to talk to your city council person. You want to talk to the business owners that you are going to and you want to bike to and let them know that there is interest in that. And I know uh, when we meet at places where there's not bike parking, if we can, we'll just roll our bike inside and tuck it away um, if that's okay with the business owner. Um, right. It definitely helps make a statement. But I think she was talking not so much about businesses, but about places like the WSU Stadium or other public facilities. Okay. And that's where yeah. it really gets into that realm of advocacy, which Bike Walk Wichita yes. is involved in. Yes, and so uh, we will definitely, uh, we do touch on that a little bit later, but that is uh, a really big um, aspect that we are working on. So, yeah. yep. Parking is key. Yes. So, uh, moving on, uh, just so I know our time is going quickly, uh, Wichita really, we have over 100 miles of bike infrastructure that creates a network across our city. Um, and there are still areas missing infrastructure, as we just mentioned, our advocacy. It's why we partner with neighborhoods and uh, try to advocate for those improvements. Uh, but we do have a pretty uh, interesting network already. Um, and early on, I know, uh, I heard bicyclists saying, well, you just, you don't drive like you ride. And I was, or you don't ride like you drive. Sorry, is what they said. And I thought, well, duh. Um, until I realized what they meant is that when you drive, you often look for the most direct route. Um, and when I bike, I zigzag all across the city, uh, pretty much leaping from one bike lane to a side path to lower traffic streets. Um, you can almost always go one block over. Since we do live on a grid, of course, when you get around the river, and really when you get over to the west side of Wichita, um, it does make it a lot harder. Uh, people wonder, well, why is West Wichita so hard to bike commute in? Well, if you look at it, a lot of that was designed later, and it, it's more recent infrastructure right. than the east side of town. And College Hill and Riverside, those areas that were developed really early on in Wichita's, uh, you know, history, and so they were designed for vehicles and to move them as fast as it and efficiently as they can. Um, so we are definitely working hard. If you live uh, on the west side, definitely could use your help. And uh, actually, any every district has, you know, its areas that you have to be aware of, which is why it's really important to do some route planning before. Um, the city of Wichita does have a bike map. We are hoping to work with them to get that updated uh, for, for this next year because uh, they have added, they're adding a lot of infrastructure every year. Um, you can also use Google Maps, but just one warning is that there are streets where Google will tell you to ride on and that, uh, you know, will be bike friendly. Uh, you can just click the little bike symbol when you're working on uh, pulling up your directions. Um, and so what they may consider uh, safe for you to ride on may not be what you're comfortable with. So just make sure, you know, if it tells you to go on Rock Road, you know, make sure you're comfortable <laughs> with, with rolling on it, which 
right now is actually really pleasant. So, <laughs> it's amazing. Um, so one thing to consider is to pull out a map. You know, uh, we actually have a few left. Uh, you know, they, they are missing some of the newer infrastructure, but map it out uh, where you're going to ride and do a test ride or a test drive of your route before you actually have to commute for, you know, a, a meeting or for work. So. I know Jack is going to be sharing the link to the city's uh, maps and other resources. So Amy, uh, I know you have a good example of this. Yes, um, when I go to the grocery store, um, I could go straight down 13th Street, but I don't really want to bike on 13th Street. What? So I actually, yeah, I uh, actually get out of my neighborhood cross uh, McLean and then I hop up to 15th Street and kind of bike through that neighborhood and then hop back down and get to Dillon's. So um, I mean this is just it's a lot less stressful of a ride and uh, my life is a lot safer that way. <laughs> um, the drivers on 13th Street can be kind of hostile. So yeah this is it, it really, because we're on a grid, I mean, it's so easy to find an alternate route. And uh, uh, when I bike to work, I actually go like a mile and a half out of my way so that I'm not biking on Harry Street. So, and you know, it's just a few more miles that you get to. Yeah. So, exactly. uh, looking at some of the infrastructure that you're going to see here in Wichita. We have a couple of different varieties, and it's really pretty consistent across the state, which is nice that our city has you know, decided to utilize best practices. We have, of course, our bike lanes uh, that a lot of you are familiar with on First and Second Street and Market Topeka, and they're putting in more. There's one that just went out by WSU, so now you can get on 17th Street. Um, then, of course, we have quite a few side paths, and these are paths that are usually 10 feet, 12 feet wide, uh, so that uh, multiple people can can cross at a time and it, it's safe. Um, so we have lots of side paths around town and the city is doing a good job. You do need to be careful and considerate, similar to a sidewalk in that there are going to be spaces where, you know, traffic may cross that side path that you really need to treat that like an intersection. Um, you'll also see the Sharrows around town. So this is Sycamore, which is right now, uh, right by our brand new stadium. Uh, if you ride right there, you'll see the Sharrow painted on the street. And that's basically to remind drivers that we do belong there and that they are supposed to share the road. And right. it's Sharrows. Yeah. Um, so there's, there's quite a few of, of those around town as well. And the city, really what they've done is they've looked for those lower traffic streets uh, mm -hmm. that are good connectors. Yeah. And then you will see on some of our larger arterial roads, they are putting in these new crossing signals that are called hawk signals or uh, just a little bit more advanced signals um, to really stop traffic when a bicyclist or pedestrian pulls up to it. Just want to note that you really want to beware because uh, when you hit the button, it will stop traffic, but you just want to make sure that traffic does see you and stops. So that's some of the uh, infrastructure that you'll see around town. And like I said, it's really a growing network. Right. And, uh, What's super awesome is to be able to see where everyone's riding, where all your friends are riding. So, Amy, yeah. what are people using? I, I have really been, I, I've, I've loved being on Strava and seeing where everybody's riding. And you can log walks or bike rides or you're swimming or yoga. Yeah, you can log a lot of different like workouts on Strava. But the good thing about logging where you bike and where you walk is that um, the municipalities, the city of Wichita and the state of Kansas and stuff can actually pull heat maps of where their residents are, are walking and biking. Um, it will be aggregated data, so it won't be like, Amy rides this route. <laughs> so um, the city can't really you know, see who's doing what, but they can just see where we're biking and walking. Um, so we have, Bike Walk Wichita has a Strava Club, and um, we put rides up there of like an eight-mile route or a route around a particular park or something. Um, it's just a really nice way to kind of share routes. Kim, I know you came up with a route through uh, Central and Central yeah. Street. Yeah, I definitely wanted to get off Central, and so... 
Right. Yeah. So other Strava users were going back a couple blocks and it works great. So yeah. And that's good options. Yeah. It's easy to share that on, on Strava and just kind of, you know, if somebody's having trouble biking in a certain part of town, you can just kind of put the word out on Bike Walk Wichita's uh, club and see if anybody else rides that part of town and has a different route idea for you. And that's a little easier to do than Google Maps. <laughs> yes, yes. And one feature um, is that Strava does have a safety beacon if you do the paid version. And so yeah. if I do that, my husband will also receive my GPS location. Um, right. In case of a crash or in case I hit the panic button. So yeah. um, I, I'm going to, uh, move us along because I'm noticing we still have a lot of content. So Amy, <laughs> talk about pre-ride prep. Okay, so you want to kind of pack your bags the night before. Uh, anything that you can really do the night before to get you out the door in the morning. Because uh, for me, biking to work is really a mental game because yeah. I will uh, come up with whatever excuse I can come up with to not get myself out that door. So uh putting your change of clothes your office clothes in your bag put put your ride clothes out where you can get them charge your lights charge your cell phone pack your lunches pack your snacks you know really whatever you can do to uh you know check your air pressure the night before yeah um, just whatever you can do to eliminate the excuses that you can make with yourself because <laughs> it's it's i find that i'm my own worst enemy in trying to get myself out the front door absolutely and i know some research came out and they were saying that recognizing and praising yourself for achieving these small you know goals each day it shouldn't be just about big goals but it should be about all these small goals along the way so actually every time i roll out of my driveway and get one block down the street I praise myself for yeah. getting on my bike and doing the right thing and bike commuting because I could have taken the easy option. Right. Uh, I do like to bring my bike inside, especially during winter and pack it that way because I just like a warm seat when I roll out. So right. yeah. And, and winter biking is, uh, um, you know, oftentimes I, I have biked out when it's like 28 degrees outside. And, you know, yeah, that first mile is a little uncomfortable, but you get a mile down the road and you just warm yourself up and, right. you know, just keep pedaling. Yep. So I want to talk um, about the ABC quick check uh, before every single ride, you should perform this. And if you do it every ride, it really goes pretty quickly. Uh, so we're going to demonstrate it here. Uh, a is for air. You can easily pinch your tires. Amy's an accountant, she uses an air gauge. Uh, I pinch my tires to see if they're firm. Once you know your bike, you can kind of tell. Uh, if you need to know what pressure to air your tires up, it is printed on the tire for you, so that's nice and handy. Uh, you also want to check B is for brakes. So you can squeeze your, I squeeze my front brakes and try to push it, that's good, my bike's not rolling. I'll squeeze my rear brakes, good, feels nice and secure. Um, so those are working good. C is for your chain. Of course, you want to make sure you don't have any debris, kind of make sure it looks nice and clear. You also want to check your cranks and your chain cassette just by wiggling your pedal, making sure it shouldn't wiggle much. It, it should be nice and, and tight. Uh, so those are your ABCs that you want to check just really quickly. Then Quick release, those are important. Uh, I have them on my front and rear tire and uh, sometimes my trailer and some other areas. So make sure they're snug and closed before every ride. Um, I've had friends who came out from a movie and some, uh, some little shenanigan, you know, decided to go and like just loosen their quick release on their front wheel, wheel for no reason. Um, and so if you don't just check that before your ride, you could end up uh, losing all your, your teeth or something. So make sure those are done. And then the final thing is just make sure every time you roll out, uh, that first 30 seconds, as Amy said, is kind of listening to your bike. I shift gears, make sure my chain's not gonna drop off or do anything crazy. So uh, before I get out of my neighborhood, because you know it's so much easier just to turn right around and get that done at home. So that is the ABC Quick Check. Yeah, so it's, you know, 
yeah, getting out the front door, getting past your excuses, that's, that's a big, big deal. And uh, usually the, the bike mechanics are not the, not the excuse. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and <laughs> absolutely. So everything you can do just to make it easy uh, on yourself. So of course, you know, uh, you know, writing is uh, yep. what, what it's all about. Uh, we wanna share just a few safe writing tips. Uh, there are five rules of the road, and really if you practice these, you will really minimize the chances uh, that you're in a crash or in a very severe crash. Um, so follow the laws. You know, we have the same rights and rules as drivers. Uh, that means we ride with traffic um, and, you know, not against traffic. So uh, also be predictable as we've talked about. Make sure you're signaling before you're turning or changing lanes. Uh, just, you know, making sure you're communicating. You want to be visible. We talked about lights. Um, also, making eye contact is super important uh, during this time. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, riding ready, making sure, you know, your bike is ready to go, you're ready to go, you're in the game, you're wearing your helmet. Uh, those are important. So talking about hand signals, I like to just tell everybody, you know, point where you're going, basically. So if you want to turn left, you're going to point left. If you want to turn right, you're going to point right. And you're gonna make that eye contact with those drivers that you're communicating with or those pedestrians. Um, so that's, it's really important to have really confident body language. Uh, really, it's amazing how the traffic picks up on it. Right. If you wanna hit again, oh, there's animation. Yeah. So the, it is legal to do the old school um, right turn signal, which is basically the left hand extended and, and bent. But one, nobody knows what the heck this means anymore. Um, and really, if your goal is clear, quick communication, I say pointing makes way more sense. So, Plus you'll end up with a big X on your back, apparently, if yes, you do that. So it, it can avoid happen. the big X. Absolutely. <laughs> so biking on, riding on the street, biking on the sidewalk. Um, I run into this a lot. People are just like, why do you ride on the street? I would be so terrified to do that. I am terrified to ride on the sidewalk because every driveway becomes an intersection. If you think about how you drive, when you're pulling out from Dillon's, are you stopping to check before the sidewalk to check for a pedestrian, to check if there are any bikes coming by? Most of the time, you don't even know that that Dillon's has a sidewalk when you're pulling out to the street. So drivers are obviously are not looking there. So I would prefer to bike where the drivers are going to see me, and that's in the road with them. And as as we've discussed, you know, if you're confident and you're clear and predictable, then you you can be relatively safe and a lot safer than riding on the sidewalk. Uh, a lot of data studies have been done. You're probably 70% more likely to be hit by a car or get into an accident riding on the sidewalk than you are in the street. So trying to, you know, bike on the sidewalk, you've got momentum going, you've got all of this stuff. So we've got a little video here about lane positioning with your biking in the street. One of the most important parts of being a safe rider is knowing where to position yourself on the road. As a cyclist, you should always ride with the flow of traffic. In the United States, that means riding on the right side of the road. Give the curb about three feet of space. When a lane is not wide enough to support a car and a bicycle comfortably, take the lane. This means riding in the middle of the lane so the cars have to pass on the left when it is safe for both the car and the bicyclist. When navigating an intersection as a cyclist, Use the rightmost through lane that suits your destination. If you're planning on going straight through an intersection with a left turn lane, a through lane, and a right turn lane, you should use the through lane to pass through that intersection. Make sure to use your turn signals and other communicative skills to let vehicles know of your intentions. Yeah, so it's, I, I know that biking on the street can be daunting. Bike Walk Wichita, we have classes that can help you with that. And honestly, if you find me at the farmer's market, I will make plans with you and I will meet with you and we will bike some streets together because 
we just need to get more people on the road and the more often you do this the more comfortable you're going to get and if you know if you need to ride with us let's do it let's get out there and ride because these roads don't only belong to cars they belong to us too and i like the next video how really you get the feel for what it's like right oh too close yeah oh and another one Make the lane, yay. So you can just feel how much better you, it just feels comfortable. Right, yep. Uh, sometimes though, anger does build up. This is why I bike with cameras. <laughs> and yes, the pesky motor is saved 10 seconds uh, <laughs> by cutting in front. But, uh, so, great example, and really, once you start figuring out your lane positioning, uh, you really will direct traffic a lot more. So, Amy, right. what, about the, what, is, what about the door zones? Oh, my goodness. The door zones, so, especially with, like, the Market Street bike lane, going up Market Street and stuff, there's no, I mean, you're biking in the door zone. That's where they have the bike lane. So, we sometimes... Tried. We tried. We tried to tell them. Yeah. So sometimes I just pop into the lane, the car lane, and, and ride that. But um, as, as usual, you know, be aware of the cars as you're biking, not only the cars that are traffic around you, but the cars that are parked. And, uh, you know, did somebody just get in that car and they're going to be pulling out? Did that car just park and somebody's going to be opening the door? Um, I prefer the parallel parking because I can actually see through the windows in the car and see if somebody's in that car and know, notice if they're more likely to be opening a door and getting out. But it's just being aware of your surroundings and uh, that uh, anticipation of what's going on and awareness can really uh, prevent a lot of accidents. Yeah, it makes your ride so much better. And that's why I say you, just, you really get in the zone. You just, you're just in it, so. Okay. Uh, there's some other safe riding practices. You know, we already mentioned stay out of the gutter. Really, that's where all the debris and the glass and everything is anyways. Um, yeah. and there's a lot of cracks and stuff. And really, that just encourages the drivers to share and snug right up next to you. So yeah. get out of the gutter, get into the lane, uh, ride with confidence, make eye contact. Uh, Wichita really is fairly safe, and I really haven't had too many angry drivers. I know a few people have mentioned that they've experienced some. I've learned to, I just, I take everything as a compliment. So I just wave and smile um, and just keep on rolling. Um, at night, uh, you might want to stay more on either the well-lit paths or as a woman, I will actually move over to the streets, even if there's a lit path along the river, yeah. for example, because I want to be seen by traffic and everybody else. Yeah. Um, so look for those more populated areas. Also, Wichita City Reports app, you can download this to your phone. Just type in Wichita Report. Uh, you can pull it up at any time when you're writing, snap a photo, submit, like if there's limbs in the path or if there's a light out or glass on the path. And they will come out and they will take care of it pretty quick. So They just uh, sweepered the bike lanes on 1st and 2nd Street. Oh, yes. And did they push it more into the bike lane or did they actually clean it out? They said they actually sweepered the bike lane. Wow. That's we're, we're trying, we're trying to we're work trying. and educate them. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, just to let you know, even with COVID and everything that's going on, May is still bike month. So mm -hmm. this Friday is May 1st and it's gonna kick it off bike month. And we have, it's gonna be different this year, of course, uh, but this is our 10th annual one to be celebrating locally. So yay. Um, and we have several great challenges that you might wanna participate in there's gonna be gift cards and cash prizes. Uh, so it's definitely worth your time. We have uh, a bike bingo that you can do all month long. We also have a Strava art challenge. So you can get on Strava and draw some art over Wichita and uh, get entered for that uh, really nice prize drawing. And then we also have a bike commuter challenge. So all of these details will be shared on the Bike Month ICT Facebook page and website. Uh, make sure you follow those. Shelly says she can't wait to permit, uh, participate in the commuter challenge. So yes. good. We'll be glad to see you out there. And, and we'll she said thanks for this webinar. 
and I will see if her dad wins at the bingo. So I know he's pretty yeah. competitive as well. <laughs> uh, just, you know, back in February, we had our Groundhog's Day ride. Um, and, you know, little did we know uh, that we wouldn't be meeting again like this for, for a little while. But we really do hope that you will join us online or, you know, virtually for this time. And then hopefully we'll be seeing you around uh, town soon. Um, if you would like to help us pick up the pace, uh, donations are definitely uh, helpful um, and appreciated. And all of it stays locally and is, and is tax deductible, as our accountants will tell you, which this yeah. next year should be really worth it. So right. listening yeah. all the deductions. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, it's worth it to, to give to us. So we have one more poll before we end tonight. And I just kind of wanted to, uh, we want to hear from you. What do you want to see uh, virtually or for classes, uh, you know, in these next few months? We can, Amy and I will be passing this along to our bike education team and our recycle work groups. Yeah, we've done, um, sometimes we sneak some meal prep tips in our podcast. So uh, you might want to definitely check that out. Um, you know, all of these things blend in one with another. So everything is so connected. And uh, but we have a hard time narrowing it down. So that's kind of what this poll is helping us do. Exactly. So hopefully you found a lot of good information in this, in this uh, class discussion, yeah. whatever we want to call it. And um, yeah. Okay. Excellent. Well, thanks for those. We will share those uh, mm -hmm. with our education, like I said, work groups. And all of those work groups, really, as I mentioned, Bike Walk with Shot is a resident led organization. Without you, we don't do anything. Um, and you bring all the ideas and the, the cool solutions and, and stuff to the table. So um, if you can connect with us, she mentioned the podcast. We have an e newsletter that goes out just twice a month. So we're not going to overwhelm your email. Uh, but it has really good city news and information. Also, we mentioned the advocacy alert. Uh, so if you see the orange symbol with the megaphone, that means we're really hoping you will take action, that you will share your voice. And actually, I think there's a survey that I'll be sharing tomorrow. And the city's asking, what do you want to see on our streets for the next like 20 years? So yeah. Perfect opportunity. Um, the city has more than 40 projects in place, so our advocacy is uh, really just taking off this year. And uh, Rick, I know you're on tonight. If you can uh, say hello on the chat. Rick is our volunteer A-team leader uh, for our advocacy ambassadors. If you have any questions about advocacy, you can always let Rick know, or you can just mm -hmm. get in contact with Bike Walk Wichita and we'll connect you. Um, but we are, we are tracking and working uh, to make Wichita a more connected, safe city for you. So. Right. Okay, uh, let's unmute the lines and we have a few minutes for questions and answers. Wow, I just, this was great. <laughs> and I cannot wait to go ride tomorrow. So, yeah. Any uh, burning questions out there? So, on webinar, uh, the, they have to put their questions in the chat. We're the only okay. people who can okay. talk. Okay. And I'm not seeing any questions at the chat. Well, there so was a, there was a question up above that. Um, let me see if I can find it again. Can you explain the how to use the green turn boxes in? Oh, the I missed that one. Oh, that is a great. great. Yeah, that's that's from yeah. Julie. Yes. So when you are riding in the bike lanes and you come up to the point that is painted green and it has kind of a dashed line. That is indicating to you that it is an area you should really pay attention to. That traffic, they can merge into that bike lane at that time. It's usually around intersections where they're gonna turn or if they need to get onto the highway. So uh, those, gray, those green painted areas are areas where you really need to pay attention. Um, and then the, the bike box. Yes, uh, so the bike box, you definitely, you'll see these on just a couple of streets, but it's basically um, a spot that's designated for you as a bicyclist. It's kind of the safe spot that the city's designated you should be so that all the traffic in that intersection can see you. Mm -hmm. um, what's drivers always ask me, well, I don't understand the bike lanes and when I should drive in them and not. And I said, it's a, if it's a solid line, don't cross it. 
Right. Is there any other thing, any, you know, that you've learned from driving from day one? So those green boxes, the dash line, that means traffic and bikes can merge in that section. So just beware. Great question. Oh, where do we get our reflective tape? Oh, uh, yeah. So I think we've got some 3M tape or something. Yeah, so actually uh, we'll have it at our next events just to give out. Uh, we have little samples that we've gotten from 3M and it is super bright and it's actually enough strips to do your helmet, shoes, bike, uh, all sorts of places. Uh, so we do have that. You can stop by bikewalkwitch.headquarters headquarters uh, if you need that in the meantime during our open hours. Um, you can order it online uh, easily. So, and, and you can buy the kind that you sew in, that you just stick on. It comes in everything. Jack? Uh, Chris asks, where can I get a bike month shirt like yours? Oh, you can't. You can't. Sorry. No. Oh, that is sad. Sorry. Limited edition. This was a few years ago. Um, and we were we were super excited to design one for our 10th anniversary. You know, we had DJs planned. We had all this stuff planned. And then, of course, you know, we're told we really could do a lot of that stuff. So um, I don't think we'll have a super fancy shirt this year. Uh, for bike month but you never know we do have some things in the works so make sure you stay tuned to those pages if, if you want to sponsor getting t-shirts made we'll take some sponsorships for t-shirts and i'll make you a special t-shirt yeah uh, yeah ashley asked she said she just got a new bike and assembled it herself but she'd like to have a professional make sure that she did everything correctly is there anyone besides mobile bike pro that offers house calls for bike service uh, only uh, looking for other options because I don't want to wait until next week for their availability. And I currently don't have a car mount to transport to a local shop. Yeah, so, so I, we I, do. Um, Al Pasquan yes. has Riverside Bike Repair. And he doesn't usually do mobile repair, but he has a bike trailer. He rides everywhere. He's the one that takes care of our bike share bikes. Um, he is an awesome mechanic. And he actually, I paid him to overhaul one of my vintage bikes I got from here. Uh, so Riverside Bike Repair, we have this card uh, right there that we can put it up, uh, is one option. Um, I don't think the bike shops, uh, as far as I know, do mobile repair. But if you were able to get it here, we could probably work something. Our open shop, we're not running that right now, but we are doing some uh, small kinds of events like that or, or connections with people. And so if you were able to bring it here, I bet you could make an arrangement with Zeke to be here and do one of our mentor maintenance kinds of things so that uh, you could uh, he'd go over it with you. And that might be a great advantage because one, it would be free and uh, that you'd be able to learn as you go. Zeke's a great instructor right? and yes. all of our recycle coordinators are. Yes. But that would mean you'd have to get the bike here, but you need to learn how to do that. Take the front wheel off and put it across your back seat if you've got a car. Uh, lots of bikes will fit in there as long as the front wheel is off. Yeah, it's really surprising that your bike usually will fit across. Look on the YouTube and see, you'll find that. Is there Anything. any is there any plans for bike path repairs that we know of? Where can we tell the city uh, the bike path needs some repairs? Yeah, so that Wichita Reports app is really the best place. Um, also, if you go to the city's website, they do have um, a spot where you can type in. Uh, concerns or repairs as well, but really the reports app works the best. Yeah. And you can also just let us know and we will share it. We have meetings regularly with Public Works and others and so we can let them know. We did successfully advocate for additional funds for bike path repairs actually a couple years ago. So the city is working, you will see, they're, they're filling in cracks and working on those uh, as we speak. And they are responsive with the app. Um, I've used it to report graffiti on the paved section of the Redbud Trail uh, of, of several different times. And it's been interesting. I know that at least one time I reported it in the morning and it was painted over by the afternoon when I went back that way. Not always are they that fast, but they are responsive. Yep. And really they use it as a way to, you know, ask for additional funding. Right. Do we have any more questions? Um, Clayton also says uh, the district, the city of Wichita Bike Ped Advisory Board or your council members district advisory board is another good place to speak up for your bike paths. Absolutely, that is a great point. And we actually have all of these meetings on our calendar. So if you go to bikewalkwichita.org slash calendar, you can look uh, Bike Ped meets every third Monday 
uh, evening and then of course there's district meetings so uh, definitely the more you can just email speak up to your council members when you see them yeah. uh, or let them know that gives them the political cover to be able to ask for the funds and to be able to do these and really what we're talking about with bike infrastructure is usually just paint so we're talking very little money you yeah. know right now we're getting ready to hopefully redesign douglas avenue because we need protected bike lane and scooter lanes uh, up and down douglas to get us to delano uh, from college hill so uh, we're really excited about that project so stay tuned we really appreciate you joining us tonight i know we're out of time so amy jack carol thank you for helping host this and thank you to everyone for joining us and we will have this recording on our website and we hope to see you around town. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.